you. Um, so my question is, it seems that with the great society, there is a certain appeal to nobility. Um, there's a higher aim towards it, the eradication of poverty. So that, that's a very idealistic sentiment, but it also a noble one. Is there a way of introducing a nobility into free market economics that simply isn't rooted in self-interest um, to provide a sort of greater appeal that would move folks in my generation, I'm a little younger than some of the people here, and allow them to uh, it, move forward in a well, there, productive way? I, I, I think one thing you're talking about is the transactional nature of Silicon Valley. I'll never know the counterparty in this deal. I'm selling him X, Y, Z, and I don't care about him. But that's not most of commerce. Most of free market is everyone you meet, you will meet again. Every person you ever meet in your life will remember the encounter with you and how you handled the transaction. And were you kind? And did you under-deliver or over-deliver? That's what I, one always tells students. You, you think you'll never see someone again. You will always see ever everyone again, and everyone will always remember what your tie, what color it was, or your scarf, and were you polite, or did you talk to someone else, and did you cheat him? So there is a natural morality to commerce, because when you sell something to someone, they remember that if you cheated them. It, uh, let's, uh, um, life, uh, most of us avoid bad airports, because bad airports lie to us. They advertise a close gate, and then we find we have to walk two miles to the gate. They say we have a boarding pass, and then we're unseated, right? Uh, so so uh, we know when we can to avoid bad airports, which are, say, say low, trust, uh, low trust places. And we look for high trust places where the airport is even nicer than we thought. Um, and maybe it has free coffee. Um, I think they have that in, in Toronto. So, uh, so I like that. And that's not socialism. That's good commerce, right? So, so uh, I think we have to think about the kindness and the morality in commerce um, and expose it. Uh, let's think of it this way. eBay, when we were young, pe people my age, again, we wouldn't have believed that eBay could work. Because you send your money off to someone in another state who nobody you know knows, and he or she sends you back more or less the thing you ordered, right? More or less. Uh, and sometimes it's a part which you haven't inspected yourself, like a car part. Oh my gosh, and it might be flawed in some way where that other person could say he technically sent you a good thing, but the thing is useless to you. And we might send $185 for a car part if we're building a car. And yet, most of the time, eBay works. Most of the time, most of us are satisfied with eBay and say, well, that is an incredibly wonderful economy where the people don't cheat each other. There's a kind of broker ref that would be the eBay company. Uh, and most of the time, and the same is for Airbnb, most of the time, you don't get murdered. <laughs> Most of the time, even on Craigslist, you don't get, now most of the time on Craigslist, which it, you don't get cheated. The, the stories that you hear in Uber, they're the exception. So there's a lot of evidence of a great commercial economy involving a lot of kindness and respect for fellow men and a lot of utils, to put it in, a lot of benefit to people that is um, underappreciated. 